Hey there, and welcome to Breakfast with Mark Daniels for Friday, February 28th, 2020. Here's your Long Island weekend weather. Daily highs from 35 to 40. Nighttime lows in the mid-20s to around 30. No precip over the weekend, no rain, and still no snow. And skies should be partly sunny today through Sunday. Now, normally this would be the last day of the month. However, since it's a leap year, they've added one additional day to February. So we'll have a February 29th tomorrow. Now, the whys we have a leap year, some years and some years we don't, well, it's a little complicated. So for my sake and yours, let's keep it really simple. The extra day is added to help keep the calendar year synchronized with the astronomical year. It's, I guess, mathematical and scientific, and it's a little deep to cover here. But I guess the one thing we all need to know is that we'll have one more day in February tomorrow. That's easy enough. And in case you forgot that it's coming back, yep, Daylight Savings Time kicks in on March 8th. Not March 1st, but March the 8th. So you have another week left of Standard Time. Today is National Public Sleeping Day. And the key word there is public. So it encourages you to take a midday nap right where you are. It could be on a bus, on a train. Yeah, I don't know if I'd want to do that, but any public place that might work for you. Just be careful not to take a midday nap at your desk at work. Mm, doesn't go over well with the boss. I think the one place we've all seen people take public naps is on an airplane. I don't mind looking over at the guy across the aisle as he snores away with his mouth hanging wide open. But for me personally, I really don't like it that people observe my public sleep style. Public napping. It's harmless. I mean, it's sleep. I don't think I snore, and at the same time, I don't know whether or not my mouth hangs open, although I've been told it does. So, in this case, I might find some place where I can isolate myself to grab that midday nap on this very important public sleep day. Today's also a day to salute the Tooth Fairy. It's National Tooth Fairy Day, and it's also a good day to help develop good dental hygiene with your kids. And we all know how it works. Your child loses a tooth puts it under their pillow, and the next day, the tooth fairy usually brings some sort of a treat to the child. I remember there was one time my daughter lost a tooth. Don't remember which one it was. Um, she put her tooth under her pillow, and the next morning when she woke up, expecting to see some sort of treat from the tooth fairy, the tooth was still there, and there was no treat. So I guess we assume that the tooth fairy was rather busy that night, a lot of customers to deal with and either forgot or just didn't have time to make it to our house. But we talked about it and yeah, there was a lot of emotion the next day. Um, but the following day we tried it again. She went to sleep with the tooth under her pillow and lo and behold, the tooth fairy finally did make it to our house and left a little extra, not a lot, but a little, I guess it was the tooth fairy's way of saying, Hey, sorry, I missed you last night. And I'm happy to say that that never happened again. And finally, today is National Skip the Straw Day. And on Long Island, it's already the law that you can't use or sell or even possess a plastic straw. Like the single-use plastic bag ban, the plastic straw ban is also an effort to help protect the environment. So now there are paper straws, and I really don't like them. I don't know if anybody likes paper straws. Obviously, they're biodegradable, much more so than, let's say, the plastic straws. I just don't like the way they feel on my, te on my teeth. And, of course, as you probably noticed, the paper straws seem to collapse before you're halfway done with whatever it is you're drinking with that straw. But I'm a little different. Even before the plastic straw ban went into effect, I never liked using a straw. I just don't particularly get enough in my mouth to be able to satisfy the gulp that I'm trying to take. So if we've ever gone to, let's just say, McDonald's and I ordered, let's just say, a Coke or a Pepsi, they'll give me the straw or they used to give me the straw. But I always discarded the straw because I, I didn't like it. I'd much rather have a big mouthful than to have to suck through a straw to get some sort of a drink in my mouth. I just always thought that straws were too much work. So anyway, today, National Skip the Straw Day. I think you'll like it better than using a straw. Here's something else I thought you might want to know. We'd mentioned to you in another episode of Breakfast with Mark Daniels that Harry Styles, formerly with the band One Direction, is going to be doing a big tour coming up. And he's going to make a few stops at Madison Square Garden starting on July the 6th. Well, Harry has just announced another two shows at Madison Square Garden, but at a different time of year. It's going to be during Halloween, October 30th and 31st, 2020, again at Madison Square Garden. 
He's calling the two shows Harry Ween, considering the time of year. And he really would like if all the fans who attend either one or maybe both of those concerts to come dressed in costume. Remember I talked about themed parties? Well, this is a themed concert, and it should be incredible. And quite frankly, I don't know if a themed concert has ever been done. Not a requirement, it's just what the artist would like you to do. And you really don't want to be the only one showing up for the show in your jeans and t-shirt. Tickets go on sale to the general public on March the 6th. I promised myself that I'd try to stay away from this next topic for at least a little while. But no matter where you go, who you talk to, what you read, what you listen to, or what you watch, it seems to be everywhere. I guess it changed my mind when my daughter came home from school yesterday, and I said, hey, how was your day? What went on? What'd you talk about? What'd you do? She told me the coronavirus. She said that she and her friends have been buzzing about it for the last couple of weeks, and her English teacher today told her that, well, people might have to learn how to better take care of themselves, like washing their hands or not touching their face with unwashed hands. And I could see why it's being covered in the classroom as well. But yep, it is a big topic. In scouring the internet like I usually do before any episode of Breakfast with Mark Daniels, this came up. Google searches for face mask hit an all-time high amid coronavirus fears. Even Google statistics are becoming part of the coronavirus news. And from what I've read, face masks do very little to help prevent you from getting a virus like the coronavirus. The other thing my daughter mentioned to me that she and her friends were talking about was that prom dresses, many of them, are manufactured in Asia and that there may be a delay in getting these prom dresses to the girls for their proms, which most of them will happen in June. And the other things I've read about restrictions on travel to many parts of Asia, about thousands of people being quarantined on cruise ships, and the latest story about a cruise ship in the Caribbean that couldn't enter its port of call because one of the crew members had the flu. Not the coronavirus, but the flu. But the sensitivity is so high internationally that those people operating the cruise ports want to make sure that they're not going to contribute to the spread of this still unknown virus. Even JetBlue is waiving fees for canceling or changing flights because of the coronavirus. It's the first U.S. airline to do so for all of its routes. There are many people who are alarmed. And then there are other people who say that we're overreacting and that the news media is playing into this, that it's hyping it and that it's causing worldwide fear. I don't know that they're hyping it. I don't get that sense. It is a big story. And I think people really do need to know what's going on. I think if the news media did not do as much reporting about the coronavirus, I think that they wouldn't be doing their job. I mean, this whole coronavirus thing seems like it's something out of a horror movie. Virus sweeps the world and we don't have a cure or a vaccination or a treatment. It is pretty scary stuff. I suppose one of my biggest fears is not really getting the virus because I've read several stories about people who have recovered from the coronavirus. I suppose my biggest concern is how it might affect our lives. There are massive school closings in Asia because they don't want to spread the virus. Could that happen here? I don't know. Nobody really knows. The biggest concern is not being able to do what you normally do on a daily basis. And there's always that fear of being stranded in some airport or some cruise port because you can't get off a ship or off an airplane because somebody might be sick, maybe not with the coronavirus, maybe something else. But no government wants to take that kind of a chance. And in extreme cases, clearing you to leave wherever you are could take days, if not longer. So as far as the coronavirus goes, it's still very much unknown. And we really don't know what kind of effects, if any, it'll have on Long Island. And right now, the best that we can do to help prevent any spread here would be to make sure that we wash our hands thoroughly. That's getting back to basics. And finally today, a much lighter and brighter, cheerier topic. I was on my way out to get the mail today, walked down the driveway, and as I'm making my way down the driveway, it caught me by surprise. I thought... It's too early for this. I mean, we haven't even hit daylight savings time yet. It's still February, but there it was. Daffodils were pushing up out of the ground. I couldn't believe it. This is a sunnier spot in my house where the sun normally warms the ground first before anything else. But there they were, the first sign of spring. Daffodils are one of the first flowers to appear in the spring months. 
Okay, but February is not a spring month. Normally, it's really cold, and we still have leftover snow on the ground. We didn't really have a cold winter so far. Knock a little, knock a little wood, and we really haven't had snowfall that we could measure in feet or even half feet all winter. There's hardly been any. So maybe spring is coming a little early, and maybe the groundhogs that predicted an early spring, well, maybe they were right. I haven't really heard any birds chirping. That's another sign of spring. Although I have still heard that noisy dog behind me every now and then. But this to me is like, wow, we're almost done with winter. It's a, I guess the way I saw it was that it's a sign of hope for better weather, for outdoor weather, for back to the beaches and the picnics and the barbecues. I know we're not there yet, but it just gave me such a boost that I just wanted to mention it to you. If you have daffodils planted in your yard, chances are they're starting to sprout up as well. Yeah, listen, I'm not going to say happy spring yet. I'll hold that off until at least, at least late March. And that'll do it for this episode of Breakfast with Mark Daniels. Thank you so much for listening. I'm glad you listened all week, and I hope you have a great weekend. Breakfast with Mark Daniels can be heard on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Alexa, iHeart Podcasts, buzzsprout.com and wherever podcasts are heard. Just search Breakfast with Mark Daniels. If you're listening to us on Facebook, make sure you like and share. That's how we keep growing Breakfast with Mark Daniels. Love to get emails from you too. Anytime. Breakfast with Mark Daniels at gmail.com. Again, have a great weekend. We'll see you back here soon for Breakfast with Mark Daniels.